there is a framework that we covered multiple times on this channel and i use it multiple times to showcase how you can build full stack production ready applications within minutes it's called hi and it has gotten many updates since our last post on it for the people who do not know HiPy is an open source tool that is used to streamline and build Python data as well as AI web apps quite easily. Now, I sometimes say that this is a perfect alternative to Streamlit and in certain cases, it's even better. It's quite comparable to it. TypePy is a React application that can work with callbacks from the backend, whereas Streamlit is utilizing caching as well as caches the entire page, which is what is causing long waiting time. Now, don't get me wrong, Streamlit is definitely simple and easy to design applications. However, TypeI takes a novel approach here for developing apps by providing extended markdown syntax, and it's quite easier, simpler, and clearer to develop with. Now, since my last upload, they introduced many new features such as their new TypeI Designer, which is a revolutionary Python drag and drop GUI builder. You can easily and effortlessly create dynamic GUIs on top of your Python code. Now, another update is the callbacks within TypeI. Understanding how it enhances the performance compared to Streamlit's caching system is quite key. And the reason why I say this is because TypeE uses callbacks, and this is to improve the performance by selectively updating only the parts of the application that are needed to change when you interact with it. It means that it's faster, more responsive, because Type by it doesn't actually need to reload the entire application. In contrast, Streamlit relies on caching the whole page, which can lead to longer wait times. It's quite common and it's quite frustrating for Streamlit users as it slows down the app's responsiveness, especially in data driven tasks. Now, the point of today's video is going to be showcasing how you can develop applications with Type by, as well as going head to head against Streamlit. I want to showcase the capabilities first, so let's take a look at certain applications that have been created in various areas. For example, there's different full production ready applications within the finance sector as well as through visualization. Now let's just take a look at certain apps that were created within the finance category. This is where they have developed a stock prediction application. You can actually try this out and download it, but in this case, this is something that was fully developed with TypeEye. This is a simple one page demo that is designed to showcase how you can easily develop different apps. In this case, it's a forecast data visualization dashboard app that is going to showcase stock prices and the analysis of it. You can see that it is quite interactive. You can basically select a ticker. You can provide historical data as well as choosing prediction periods. You can then simply just click on predict and it will basically forecast the prediction within a certain period. Now, many of you guys who watch my channel tend to watch these different creation tools such as CloudDev, Ada, or many of the other coding based frameworks which help you build apps. Now, these apps are truly amazing, but the type of apps that are created are quite broad and they might be kind of faulty in certain areas. It's easy for the AI to generate it, but when you take a look at something like Typey or TypeEye, you can easily create various apps that are more intricate and easier to work with. You have various components that you can utilize within the library to help you and effortlessly create these apps. Another type of application that was developed with TypeEye is this beautiful sales dashboard. This is a different type of app where you can extract and analyze data from an Excel file. You're going to be able to gain valuable insights with this app and you can see that it's quite refined and it looks really really appealing so how can we get started and how can we start building our own ai applications well it's fairly easy what you'll need to do first is install the prerequisites this is where you're going to need to make sure that you have the pip package installed you can easily install this with this documentation i'll leave a link to this in the description below install it for your operating system once you have that installed, make sure that you have Python installed, which is going to be the programming language that we're going to be utilizing for TypeEye. And you need to also make sure that you have VS Code because we're going to be utilizing this ID to configure and build our apps. Once you have all the prerequisites fulfilled, you can then simply open up command prompt if you're on Windows. And what you want to do is go over to the typeeye.io website and simply just click on this button over here, which is giving you the command to install this locally onto your computer. So I'm going to paste this into my command prompt and I'm going to start installing the TypeEye packages. 
And before we even get deeper into the installation, you can also try out the drag and drop GUI builder. You can try this for free by filling out this form. And this is where you're going to be able to access this builder to simply just drag and drop components to fully build out your app. Now simply open up Visual Studio Code and you want to basically create a new Python file. This is where you're going to then import the typey or the typey uh, packages. And that's by simply just typing in from typey and then import the GUI. And from here, what you're going to be able to do is get started with developing your application. So I went along and I created my own page, which is getting started with TyPy. And I have this GUI be being deployed into this page where it's going to be running a debugger and with this port over here. So what I'm going to do now is just test this out. So I'm going to save this onto my desk and your application should start up with getting started. Now that we have built the graphical interface or a base for our application, we can start pasting in the TyPy, uh, I would say visual elements or various elements that can enhance your application. If you go over to the documentation and click on the manuals, you're going to be able to see that there is different elements that you can add with TyPy Rust, with GUI, as well as the core itself. In this case, if you click on the GUI, you're going to be able to see that there's various elements that you can add towards. Now, the user manual is perfect because you can browse through a lot of different components that you can add your overall application so if you're interested i'll leave a link to this in the description below and this is how you're going to be able to configure and create your application now in my opinion the best way you can do so is just head over to the gallery and say that there is an application that has already been created for example you have a production planning app that was created what you can do is head over to the github repository for this application and you're going to be able to then get all the components that were created utilizing typees uh, library and you can easily just copy and paste that into your own element like we saw with the finance application the stock prediction one you can get it on github and you can simply get the files or get the base structure of this and you can paste it into your own app and you can then further create your own application with that base now that we have created the base for our application by creating the graphical interface itself what you can do now is paste in the different elements you want to go over to the documentation click on tutorials now there's various integrations whether that's visual or different integrations from third-party plugins that you can incorporate within your app for example if you go over to the tutorials you're going to be able to see that there's various fundamentals that you can incorporate within your app say if i want to add a visual element you can head over to the tutorials go over to the gui and click on visual elements you have different options that you can basically placed in such as different charts as well as various sorts of components that can elevate your application to look like this. Now I have a full on video that showcases this in one of my prior uploads on TyPy. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at that video which showcases how you can step by step create your own application. Now that we have the creation of apps out of the way, I want to take a look at callbacks once again. Now, the reason why I want to do this is because I want to differentiate Streamlit with TypeI. Now, I mentioned about callbacks at the start of the video, and we know that it is a new essential feature within TypeI. It's something that is going to be supporting two different types of callbacks. You have the standard one where you're going to be able to utilize a dragging slider. You can also type into an input box as well as selecting different values from a dropdown. You also have long running callbacks, which are these different types of callbacks that allow the server to handle heavy processing in the background, which keeps the user interface responsive. The thing is, in real world applications, you want to have the performance and the user experience to be the top like priority. But we've seen with Streamlit's caching is going to be something that reduces load times to actually improve the efficiency, but that often requires re-rendering of the entire page. This is what is going to basically cause a lack of performance when people actually go on that page. And this is what you'd see in other libraries in comparison to TypeI. It would just keep continuously loading to process that graphical unit. But the great thing with TypeI is that it has small callbacks. This is an update that is going to be delivering faster responses and smoother user experiences, which is perfect for data heavy applications. With its callback approach, TypeI can basically focus on selective updates without refreshing the whole interface. It's going to focus on real-time interactivity, and it's also going to be event-driven. 
So this is exactly what you would need for your data application or whatever application that you're building with HiFi. Now there's so much more to this, so I definitely recommend that you take a look at their callbacks documentation, which basically showcases a couple examples as to how you can get started with this. But with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and you got some sort of value out of it. This is how you can utilize TypeFi as well as AI to build different applications for you. So with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you take a look at their GitHub repository and give them a star. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Make sure you follow me to, on the Patreon so that you can access different subscriptions completely for free on a monthly basis. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.